obviously Neymar also scored it, so it's I not feel, a case of him not I missing feel, the penalty. I feel Mbappe should be the go-to guy in PSG, and Mbappe should be taking penalties and free kicks. I mean, he might as well give him, you know, go kick and all of that to Definitely take as well. Definitely, it's very possible. He's a talented young lad. <laughs> This is Yo TV. Good afternoon and welcome to Two Aside Sports on Yo TV. I remain your host, Tajudin Toib. Don't forget to keep liking, subscribing, and of course, you can drop your comments, observations under the comment section. We saw matches at the weekend. Manchester United, yet again, lost by four goals to nil to Brentford. Chelsea and Tottenham slug it out for 2 2. Manchester City continue with their impressive run of form, winning by four goals to zero. And we saw Arsenal defeated Leicester City 4 2. Joining me today, I'll be having Lima on the next show. But just before that, I would love to go on a short break. <laughs> Welcome back to Two Aside Sports on UOTV. I remain your host, Tajudin Toib. And I'll be in the studio with me, Muslima. Muslima, welcome on the show. Thank you very much, Toib. It's a pleasure to be here as always. Talk sports. All right, fantastic having you in the studio. All right, Muslima, the English referee on the global scene. We've not seen them do so well, even in the UEFA Champions League, UEFA competitions in general. Now, yet again, we saw Anthony Taylor with the same mistake he has been doing over and over again. Paul Tierney has been doing his own quite all right. Now, it's pretty obvious that Paul Tierney is actually a very poor referee. Now, Anthony Taylor against Paul and Chelsea. Well, what can you say? I mean, I feel like it's not just the English referees. It's a uh, thing that happens with referees worldwide, but it's just predominant with the English Premier League and their referees. Quite interesting. I mean, we saw Chelsea fans coming out with a petition. About 35,000 people signed that petition to uh, ban Anthony Taylor from refereeing their games. And I think they are, they've come out to, you know, it's a right decision because, I mean, it was quite obvious that that was a foul. Uh, Romero on Cucurella drawing him back, and that could have stopped the goal. That was that, that, that was really horrible, even after checking the VR. Yeah, I mean, this is one thing people always say really, why do we need VR when there are obvious calls and you don't go back to review these uh, these mistakes. So I think it's very interesting from the Premier League. This is one thing that people always say about the Premier League and their referees that it can be very controversial. So it's pretty obvious that even after checking the VR. The referees still have the final say. Yeah, I mean, it's still it's still obvious or it's still down to human interpretation, whether it be a machine or no, it's still down to human interpretation and how they see it. You could see things differently and I could see things differently as well. So, but I think that was very clear for everyone to see there was a foul and, you know, that could have stopped the goal from Tottenham. Well, talking about the VAR, now, do you feel VAR are advantages a pretty more than the disadvantage or is the other way around? I think the VAR is something that is left to, you know, it still poses a lot of discussions between people. I mean, the cons outweigh the pros at this point because we still have these discussions on whether these uh, footballing decisions are right or wrong. And if something keeps causing a lot of drama like this, then obviously the cons outweigh the pros at this point. Yeah, we saw VAR nullify the penalty against Arsenal at the weekend. Yeah, I mean, it's just, this is not the first time we've had, you know, cases of VAR, especially in the English Premier League. It's really predominant uh, amongst the English referees because we don't see cases like this in the La Liga a lot of times, in the Sevilla, in the Bundesliga, you know, other leagues. But in the Premier League, it's quite, you know, interesting and quite unfortunate that we keep having these same discussions over and over again. Well, Muslima, you feel it's actually a case of bias or the, the referees are not just up to the tax? You know, it's just, it's because these things are left for human interpretations. They are still down to human interpretations and they are just not being consistent. I don't think it's a case of bias. I just think they are not consistent with their decisions. Because I mean, sometimes we see a particular thing happen in a particular match and a yellow card is awarded. We go to a second match and it's probably giving a red card or nothing at all. So it just needs, it just means that the referees need to go back to the drawing board, you know, look at these decisions and come up with just one thing or one decision that applies to one particular uh, foul. Very uh, fantastic. Well, I feel the English referee still needs a lot of training, particularly Anton uh, Taylor and the likes of Portieni. Portieni has been pretty poor. Yeah. We have the pay. The pay has been on 
the, uh, the list of Juventus. Now, do you see the move happening anytime soon? I mean, it could happen. Juventus lost a lot of players, and I don't think they've, you know, replaced them. And the pie is one at Barcelona. It's clear that he's not included in Xavi's plan. So I think it's just the right thing for him to, you know, look for alternatives or look to, look for other clubs to join. And at this point, if Juventus comes calling, if they match the deal, or if they are willing to uh, pay for the player, then why not? Well, it's almost a done deal. Mm -hmm. Then moving on, we have Papana. Papana has been on the list of Chelsea for more than two, three weeks now. Now, do you see the, the uh, transfer finally happening? I mean, there's always, you know, that... Now, the, considering that huge amount, that price tag on him. Yeah, I think Wesley Fofano is a very good player, but I don't think he's worth that amount of money that Chelsea wants to play for him. But it's just something that we see in the transfer market these days. I mean, lots of players are not up to the amount of money that they are being bought for. But it's just because you want him, and if, if you want a particular player, if the club decides to put a price tag to him, then you have no choice but to pay it or you look elsewhere. Wow, fantastic. So, Papana. Wow. Moving on, we have Dijon. Do you feel Dijon will probably leave Barcelona to join Manchester United? Because the transfer has been pretty long. I don't think Frankie de Jong wants to join Manchester United for some reason. He is, it has been going on for a long time now and to be very honest, it's dragging at this point. We just want it done. Are you going or are you staying, you know? Because, I mean, they've been trying to get this player for a while and he's just not budging. He's decided not to move. He's told Barcelona that they either pay him the money they owe him or he's not going anywhere. And I feel like it's the start of the season, the season has started already. I just feel like... Frankie de Jong is probably going to still remain at Barcelona or not go to Manchester United. All right, fantastic analysis there. Now, looking at the Manchester United midfield, well, not only uh, uh, Frankie on their list, they have Abion. Do you feel Raul Abion is actually a good buy for Manchester United? Because I see the deal being, or what's it called, being close to completion. I mean, Manchester United at this point need players, but I think it's just a case of the board wanting to buy players and not the coach. Because, I mean, if you if you ask Ten Hag, or Ten Hag has come out to say the type of players he wants in his team, and I don't think Hedron Rabiot is one of the players that fits into his style of play. So if you ask me, I think he's not really going to match with Manchester United. Because, But, I mean, it's up to the board and what they want to decide, or the players they decide to go for, for the manager. Well, well. I, I feel it's actually a very bad deal for Manchester United going for a uh, player who is actually not one of the top midfielders in Europe. Yeah. Well, oh, fantastic. <laughs> Pictures for the English Premier League for the for match day three. We have Arsenal up against Bournemouth. Um, Arsenal is going to continue with their run of form. I mean. They are looking to get the third straight win on the bounce, and I think they are going to get it against the Bournemouth side that's coming back from uh, the League One. So I think Arsenal to win that game. Arsenal to win. Prediction? Uh, probably 2 1 or 2 0 for Arsenal. Well, Arsenal to win 3 0. Yeah, we have Spurs. Spurs will be, will be playing at home against Wolverhampton Wanderers. Both teams. They are looking to do very well. I mean, coming off the back of the loss, uh, the draw that Spurs had, and Wolves as well, a very difficult side. But I think Spurs will get that one just for the fact that they are going to be at home. All right, fantastic. Um, your prediction on that game? I think it's going to end 3-1 for Spurs. Well, I see the game ending in a 1-1 draw. Yeah. Well, fantastic. Moving on, we have Manchester City. Manchester City will be going away to Newcastle. I mean, Manchester City to continue their um, run of form, third straight win on the bounce, and I think they are going to, you know, continue being on the top of the table. Well, at least United up against Chelsea. Very difficult game. Leeds had a draw in the last game, so very difficult game, and they are one to score goals as well. Uh, they have Rodrigo, so I think it's going to be very difficult. But um, a draw, a draw for me. All right, a draw for you. Well, I see Chelsea. Probably pulling, uh, what's it called? Having a three point or a draw as well. Yeah, moving on, we have the biggest game of the weekend Manchester United. Well, Manchester United will be playing at, the, at home against Liverpool. A struggling Manchester United. I mean, I want to say Manchester United will do real so bad, but I mean, Liverpool is left for us to see what they'll play against Crystal Palace. I think it's going to be a very difficult game because I mean, Manchester United know that they've done woeful in their last two games and would want to come out especially because they are at home as well 
But recently, the theater of dreams has been, you know, theater of nightmare recently. So I think Liverpool will still extend their nightmare and probably defeat them. Probably defeat them. Are you giving Manchester United a chance at all? I mean, they will come out, they want to play, but the players are low in spirit. No, you actually said probably. Yeah. So I need you to state the claim. Liverpool to win. Liverpool to win. Yeah. Well, I see Liverpool defeating Manchester United yet again, 3-1. Pictures for the Spanish La Liga. Celta Figo will be playing at home against Real Madrid. Celta Vigo are a very difficult team to play against, especially the fact that they are home. Um, but I think Real Madrid are going to come up with a win in that game. Real Madrid to win. What's your prediction? Uh, both teams to score, but both teams to score, but I think uh, Real Madrid are going to win. Probably 2-1. 2-1 in, in favor of Real Madrid. Yes. Well, fantastic. Moving on, we have Atletico. Atletico has not been doing pretty well. Atletico will be playing at home against Villarreal. I mean, just for the fact that they are home, they are very good at home, especially because they know how to defend their style of play as well. I think they are going to come with that one with, you know, the usual Atletico 1-0. Well, 1-0 Atletico. Now, Barcelona will be facing a very difficult one against Real Sociedad. We know Real Sociedad to always pull out, pull out or what's it called, a surprise against Barcelona at home. Yeah. But now Barcelona will be playing at home in Camp Nou. Do you see Barcelona winning yet again for Barcelona? Ah, uh, Real Sociedad, they are always want to pose problems for Barcelona, especially like you said at home. They are a Basque side as well, and Basque side, they are known to pose problems to Barcelona. I think Real Sociedad are going to give Barca trouble, but just for the fact that Barca didn't do well in their last game, they are probably going to come off with a one new win a, uh, to Real Sociedad. A one new win to Sociedad, wow, fantastic one. Bold prediction there coming from Lima. Well, I see Barcelona probably winning or take, uh, taking a point. Yeah, moving on, we have Sevilla. Sevilla, struggling Sevilla will be playing at home against Valladolid. Hmm. I mean, Sevilla didn't do well in their last game. They lost to Osasuna. But I think they are going to come up with a win in this particular game. Straight win? Yeah, for oh. Sevilla. Well, I think you can take this to the bank. 2-1 in favor of Sevilla. Wow, fantastic. Moving on. For the German Bundesliga, we'll see Bayern go away to Bochum. Uh, Bayern to win that game. I mean, they're just going to take off from where they left off. And Bayern to win Bayern convincingly. To win. convincingly. Wow, Bayern to win 4-0. Mm. You're yeah, fantastic. Moving on, we'll see Borussia Dortmund play at home after coming coming on from a very impressive win. 3-1 last, last time out. Borussia Dortmund will be playing at home against Werder Bremen. Um, I think that one is going to win. They're just going to continue from where they left off. They're going to win their game. Yo, that one to win. Well, we have Berlin playing at home against RB Leipzig. Um, Leipzig were not so great in their last game. So I think they'll be looking to uh, make amends and they'll probably win as well. All right, Leipzig to win. Well, I see Leipzig probably draw in that game. Moving on, the League One. We'll see Lille play at home against PSG. Um, Lille are going to pose a threat and they're probably going to score in that game, but I think PSG is going to come off with a win. Yeah, um, your prediction in that game? Uh, probably 3-1 to PSG. Yeah, I see PSG winning by two goals to nil. Yeah, Mas Monaco. Monaco will be playing at home against Lens. Uh, Monaco coming off the back of their last uh, game. I think they're going to win that particular game, especially because they are home as well. Well, wow, your prediction? Um, 2 new to Monaco. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, I see Monaco winning by a goal to me. Yeah, we have Marcel. Marcel will be playing at home against Nantes. Uh, Nantes are going to pose... I don't know, I want to be bold and say that game is going to end in a draw. I don't know why. For some reason, I think that game is going to end in a draw. You see the game ending in a draw? Mm -hmm. Wow, fantastic. I see... Um, Marcel probably win 2 1. Alright, moving on to the Italia Serie A. We'll see matches at the weekend, and AC Milan will be going away to Atalanta. Hmm. Very tough game. Atalanta are a top side, top, top side, and I think they are going to cause problems for AC Milan. I mean, last season we saw dif difficult games for both teams, home and away. So I think it's going to be very interesting. I think Atalanta are probably going to win 3 2, 
Bold wow. prediction. Well, there. well, fantastic. Well, a great matchup here. Yeah. I see AC Milan going away to beat Atlanta 2 mm. 1 in favor of AC Milan. Then we have Sandoria. Sandoria will be playing at home against Juventus, the old ladies. Uh, Sandoria themselves, I think they beat Juventus last season as well. So very difficult, but I think Juventus are going to come up with an away win. Well, pretty close. Pretty, pretty close to call. Well, but Juventus should, should win, or even a draw for Juventus. Mm. Then we see Inter Milan. Inter Milan will play at, at home against Spencer. Um, Inter Milan to win. Inter Milan to win. Straight one for Inter Milan. Yeah. yeah do you see Lukaku scoring? Yeah, obviously. He's, he's going to score. So recently, Toib, we saw the game between PSG against uh, Montpellier and there's a lot of friction coming from that PSG camp. I mean, Mbappe lost the first penalty, the second penalty was given and Neymar wanted to take him. But we've seen a lot of people come out to say Mbappe was supposed to be the one playing the penalty. So what do you think about that? Oh, fantastic. To start with, we've seen the greatest player lose penalties. Yeah. So Mbappe won't actually be the first to lose penalty. I feel Mbappe should be the go-to guy in, uh, in uh, Paris Saint-Germain because looking at it, Messi is aging or probably let's just say Messi is not that guy. Now for uh, Neymar, Neymar has been a player, a player that has not been probably up to task. Yeah, he has a lot of uh, what's it called talent, prospect, but we see Mbappe, Mbappe is just so young, a lot of energy, Mbappe is still coming up. We've seen players like I said, miss penalties, but Mbappe should be the go-to guy in PSG and he should be the one taking free kick. I'm I think as, as well. I think I'm going to disagree with you as well because you said Mbappe is supposed to take free kick and penalties as well. And what does Hage have to do with the fact that a player is going to take a penalty? Yeah, well, well you lose I actually the first mentioned penalty. Age. I mentioned age, not forgetting the very fact that um, Mbappe has been that player. Mbappe has been scoring for PSG. When, when you look at the team... Yeah, but it doesn't uh, matter. A certain Cristiano Ronaldo is aging as well. He's 37 years. Are you going to tell me that Rashford is going to take a penalty ahead of Cristiano Ronaldo? It's very possible. That's not Ra going to Rash happen. Ra Rashford That's can definitely play. not going to happen. You can't put Rashford and Mbappe in the same league. We know what Mbappe is capable of doing. Mbappe is Listen, a player. Listen, I just talked about the fact that... Mbappe is one contesting... What, what, what for the Ballon d'Or? I just talked now, about the fact that can you, can you I don't think that, that has Rashford? anything to do because I mean, there's a certain Messi that has won Ballon d'Or seven times, there's a certain Neymar that has been among the candidates for the best player in the world. And you are talking about a clash of egos here. Yeah, you have a Neymar, you have a Messi, and you have a Mbappe. Mbappe missed the first penalty, so it's going to be something that's decided by the coach. The coach probably told them, Decide amongst yourself who you want to play the penalty. Now, and they probably now, said that now, if one are, pe person are, plays now, it now, and now, misses now, it, then let, the other person let, comes let me, on. Let me put this to you. We know the mental strength of players. Now, Mbappe lost the first So what does that mean? Are you saying right? Mbappe has now, a higher Mbappe, mental strength than no, Messi no, no, and Neymar? No, no, understand my point. Now, Mbappe lost the first, uh, first penalty, like you rightly mentioned. But it is probably better for the club to allow Mbappe to take the next penalty. Nah. Not allowing him to take the next penalty can probably be, uh, what's it called, a psychological damage. Him. It's not anything that has to do with psychology. I mean, they are said there are big players here. There's Messi, there's Neymar. There are players enough quality to go around in the PSG team. If you miss a penalty, you've missed your chance. And there's the next player that's going to step up. They probably decided amongst themselves before they came onto the game that when you miss a particular penalty or when you miss this uh, particular penalty, I'm going to be the one to step up to play the next one. Now, let me ask you this. Now, in every team, there is a particular player to take penalty. We have yeah, Rams. but not in a we team that Rams. you have the likes of Messi, Neymar, and Mbappe. Yeah, Those are big boys. But Absolutely, Mbappe is the current man in PSG. Nah, Messi, Messi is also there. You're, I, I think you're trying to, no, you know. Messi is there, quite alright. Messi is actually great. Okay, looking at it, um, the Ballon d'Or list just came out, and Messi is not not on the list. Yeah, but that has nothing to that do with the fact that that has nothing to do with to with the fact that um they share the penalty amongst themselves. Mbappe played a penalty, he missed it, and the Neymar is obviously going to step up. We've not even talked about Messi saying he wants to play the penalty because it's not like that kind of guy to say, we, okay, we, I want we, to take we, the penalty. We, we, we've seen Alba lost penalties in, in Arsenal and we've seen him come up to score penalties also in Arsenal. Yeah, I mean, but are you going to compare Abame Young to Mbappe, Messi and Neymar? That's not, that's not what we're talking about. No, we, we, we definitely, uh, what was it called? Look for points and facts. Now, Mbappe, in this case, is a better player than, uh, than uh, Neymar himself. Oh, wow, I think that's subjective and that's subject to opinions. A lot of people disagree with you on that. Some people think Neymar is the better player. For boy. a better percent play, would definitely be on my side. I mean, where's your facts coming from? You don't have the facts, though. Ah, uh, we have a player. We are he's a World Cup winner. <laughs> Who's a World Cup winner? Mbappe. Mbappe. Yeah, but Neymar has, has been among the top three uh, uh, best players in the world before. Yeah, we've seen Mbappe. Uh, what's he called? Uh, what's he called? Grow over time. 
and Mbappe in the next two years she will win it. Not even talking about uh, making the shortlist now. I mean, you can't say though. I mean, there's you can you obviously can say that Mbappe is coming up, but you can't you can't say for a fact that Mbappe is better than Neymar. There are start studded players there, and I talked about a clash of egos. You have this particular player who feels is the biggest player here. This other player feels is the biggest player, and they've decided amongst themselves that if you miss a particular penalty, I'll be the one to step up and play the game. Because I mean, we've seen players miss penalties and their morale has gone down. We've seen other players step up because I mean, I'm also a big player. I'll step up and take the penalty and save the team. And then obviously Neymar also scored it, so it's I not view, a case of him not I missing view, the penalty. I feel Mbappe should be the go-to guy in PSG, and Mbappe should be taking penalties and free kicks. I mean, he might as well give him, you know, go kick and all of that to take Definitely as well. Definitely, very possible. He's a talented young lad. <laughs> okay, for me, I think it's going to be decided between them. And if one person misses it, then the other person needs to step up. You, so you feel penalty should be should be a, a, a team of rotation? Yes, I mean, because they are big boys. Quality. They are all big boys, and they can all play penalties okay, equally. Imagine, so just imagine um, Lemar going to take the penalty. And he misses his soup. Yeah, but I mean, but he didn't miss. He took it and he didn't miss. So no, no I'm just, I'm just trying to paint this. Uh, paint this. Yeah, but it's probably there are probabilities. Though it has not happened. When it happens, then well, Messi we, steps we, up we've to seen take Lema it. We've lose couple of penalties. Yeah, but it has not happened. And when it happens, Messi no, steps up to Lema play. Lema yeah, we've seen all of them penalties. miss. Even Messi has missed penalties exactly. in the Copa so America so final. You say because he lost the penalty in a particular game, then you won't allow him to take the next penalty. You do, I don't think you are trying to understand my points, though. I said they decide amongst themselves who is going to play this penalty. And Mbappe has missed the penalty. You are, you have other big boys in the team. Mbappe is not the main star player or whatever. You have other boys in the no, team uh, as well no, 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 who are willing to again. step Mbappe up to play. Not He's not the main player in PSG. You still have Messi. You still you have, have Messi, Neymar. Messi, the one that just are you going to sign like... Uh, it's not about losing out on the Ballon d'Or, my dear. Are you going to sign like Messi? Are you Messi, going to sign like Messi? Playing. Yeah, Messi is still playing and he's still arguably the best player over the past few years. So few you're years. not going to sign like Messi. The, the current winner, actually. That's not what we're talking about. That's not what we're talking about. Can he miss out on the... What's it called? 20 man squad. Yeah, yeah, shifting the goalposts. That's not what we're talking about. Well, basically, apparently, <laughs> I feel Mbappe should still be the penalty taker. Okay, for, for me, I think it has to be decided, and there's Psycho a rotation between the two players. I think it's more balanced compared to Neymar. Okay. It's a wrap on this week's pictures and predictions. Still to come on the show, join Neymar next on Two Aside Sport Trend. <laughs> Welcome back to Two Aside Sports Trends on UTV. It's your girl Lima, and I'll be introducing you to the highest paying sports in the world. In number 10, wrestling. The highest paid player in this particular sport is but Brock Lesnar, and he earns about $12 million annually. In number 9, auto racing. Introduced in 1867, it has come up in our number 9 spots as the highest paying spot in the world and the top player in this particular spot earns $18 million annually. In number 8, baseball. The most popular baseball league is the MLB, Major League Baseball, and the highest paid player in this particular sport earns $38 million annually. In number 7, ice hockey. First played in the 19th century, the highest paid player in this particular sport earns about $99 million annually. In number 6 position of the highest paying sport in the world, tennis, followed by millions of people around the world, the highest paid player in this particular sport earns about $109 million annually. In number 5, football. In what is known as the most popular sport in the world, with more than 4 billion people watching this particular sport, the highest paid player in football earns about $126 million annually. Coming up in number 4, golf. Very easy to learn, but difficult to master. The highest paid player in golf earns about $127 million annually. Coming up in number four sports, American football, or what some would call football. The highest paid player in American football earns about $253 million annually. In number two, boxing. The second highest paying sport in the world. The highest paid player in this particular sport earns about $253 million annually. Coming up in our number one sport of the highest paying sports in the world, Basketball. Basketball has been playing well since 1970. Notable players like Michael Jordan and LeBron James fit into this list. 
Michael Jordan has a net worth of $1.7 billion. The highest paid player in this particular sport earns about $353 million annually. It's a wrap on this week's edition of Two Aside Sports Show on Yo TV. Thank you so much for watching us. My name is Malik Muslima. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and also turn on post notifications to tell you when we drop new videos. Until next time, go with the flow, flow with you.